primary, secondary, and tertiary sources in the health sciences. This video covers primary sources, secondary sources, and tertiary sources, and what each can do for you. When information is created is important because it affects the kind of evidence it contains and the way you can use it. In this sense, information is usually referred to as primary, secondary, or tertiary. Let's talk about what those mean. Primary sources are the original source of information. They're free of outside analysis or hindsight, and they offer direct evidence. News reports or reports from government agencies or nonprofit organizations can be considered primary sources. Here's an example. It's a situation report from the World Health Organization from July 2015 stating numbers of those infected by Ebola, fatalities, location of the outbreak, things like facts, numbers, data. In the health sciences, primary sources of note are scholarly articles that report the methods and the observations of an original research study. Here's an example of a peer-reviewed research article from July of 2015. It details an experiment that was conducted to test the persistence of the Ebola virus in bodily fluids. Original research like this is so valuable in the health sciences because it allows you the opportunity to interpret the results for yourself. Secondary sources are not the original sources of information they interpret. They discuss, critique, and analyze the content found in primary sources. You might think of this as secondhand information. This news article is reporting on research into a vaccine for the Ebola virus. Now, it doesn't give the details of the research, but as a secondary source, it gives us a summary. A scholarly article that qualifies as a secondary source makes connections between research and comments on the results of other studies. This particular example reviews all the published literature on sexual transmission of the Ebola virus up to the point it was published. Tertiary sources are made up of both primary and secondary source material. They present data and information by summarizing and condensing it so that it's easy to interpret and understand. One example of a tertiary source is something like this textbook on emerging infectious diseases. It has a chapter that talks about Ebola, but it's summarized. It summarized an immense topic in a relatively small space so that it's easy to consume and understand. Here's a practice guideline for handling bodily fluids from Ebola-infected patients given by the CDC. The practice guideline is built on evidence from original research and the repeated analysis by experts that comes afterward. This practice guideline has condensed details and condensed directions so that it can be easily used and understood in a clinical practice setting. Let's review. Primary sources are the original sources of information and present direct evidence that you can interpret on your own. Secondary sources analyze primary sources. That way you can benefit from others' perspectives and understand the current state of research. Tertiary sources condense primary and secondary source information so you can learn about a topic and understand its main points easily. If you have any questions about using the library or its services, call 915-747-5643, email us at libraryref at utep.edu, or ask us at libanswers.utep.edu.